Welcome everybody to the CHOA Jobs Week. I hope that uh, you will enjoy this program. That uh, shall we put hours of thought and planning into this, and uh, I hope you all walk away enriched and empowered to uh, navigate you know this just journey that's ahead of you. So it's four. There's four classes. As you know, there's, you could either come for the whole thing, you could come to any class as you want. Tonight's class is uh, how to match, how to figure out what your strengths are, how to match them to a job. I'm honored to have uh, Yuri Kruman, who's going to be teaching the class. Yuri, I've worked with Yuri before. He has a special method to, you know, this famous thing called aptitude testing. He sort of developed it, something a little more sophisticated, which he's going to give over to you tonight, how you look at yourself and how you analyze yourself to come up with what your strengths are, and then how do you match that to a potential job path. So, without further ado, I'm going to call Yuri up. We have these booklets we printed for you inside of some worksheets that are correlate with Yuri's class that you'll be making use of. And we're looking forward to all of you finding tremendous haslacha. Okay. Without further ado, and just as a side note, if anyone needs the restroom behind the curtain here, there's a restroom. At any time, if you're uncomfortable, you feel it's warm or something, let me know. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, I'm going to grab a cup of water before I start, just to make sure that you're sorry. So you don't get the horse version of me, because I talk all day. Your fingers to silent or wider, please. Yes. All right. So. I'm Yuri. Thank you very much for coming out on a Monday night. It's not always the best, uh, best evening for these sorts of things, but uh, we'll, we'll make the best of our time. So um, today I want to essentially tell you how to discover your strengths. The key insight is that it doesn't matter what your background is, if you're the CEO of a company or you're just a broker starting out, it completely doesn't matter. Everyone has a story. Everyone has their strengths. You just have to Find them and tell the right story to the right audience. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're learning tonight. Okay, so a little bit about me um, and what my company does. We do career coaching for millennials. So I'm pretty sure everybody here, with a notable exception, is uh, a millennial or somewhere in that range. Um, the idea of, of what we do is to help people get unstuck and uh, to figure out their life mission and essentially where to go pursue it. And there's a whole method to the madness. It's not, it's not just sort of some kind of magic bullet. You know, there's a, a methodology, a process, and I'll tell you all about that process here. Uh, just to, you know, make sure you guys don't think that, you know, I'm just from Josh Schmo off the street. Um, I write for Forbes. I'm in the Forbes Coaches Council, and I've uh, published a lot of thought leadership on this subject all over the place. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm in my fifth career, so don't, don't fear. There's always a time for... Uh, figuring things out, even if it's later than most. So that's not an issue. Um, just to give you a sense of where I've worked, I started out in neuroscience, so I was studying how the brain works. Moved over to law, uh, did law school because, you know, come from a family where you need a grad degree. Don't, don't do it for those reasons, just because your family says you should do it. You do it for the right reasons because you really want to, you see a future in that, and you know what you're doing, and you know how you're going to pay for it too. <laughs> So from there, I moved to finance. I worked for a few years in a number of uh, banks and hedge funds, um, doing all kinds of different things from compliance, risk management, you know, pretty much everything there is to do. And I moved, <coughs> excuse me, I moved over to tech startups. Um, I've done everything from product management to finance and operations, then investor relations, raised funds, pretty much everything there is to do in a startup. And at a certain point, I decided, you know what? I'm tired of working for others. It's time for me to do this on my own. And uh, that's, that's how I got to doing this company, Master the Talk Consulting. And uh, just, uh, you know, I give you a sense of having worked in a lot of different fields with all kinds of different people. Some people that think in a very formal way, others that think in a very informal way, uh, older, younger, Gen X, boomers, millennials, you name it. I've worked with everybody at every stage. So. Nothing surprises me. There's no, uh, no little corner that I haven't touched in a way. So uh, in, in a way, what I want to teach you here is that what you'll take away from tonight's class 
is that again it doesn't matter who you are where you come from you know what your aptitude is or lack of aptitude that's not the issue there's a process you follow the process you'll figure out who you are where you're meant to go and then the tactics of how to get there will fall in place all right so this is the process of how I help my clients to go from you know I'm not sure what I'm meant to do who am I what am I I'll, I'll go through these I know it's a little bit small um, to essentially figuring out okay I'm meant to do you know this particular thing this particular function in this industry and of course that also changes with time not everybody stays in the same career we know that Millennials change all the time they change roles change companies that's okay there's nothing wrong with that no matter what anybody else has told you and you know our parents generation and never mind grandparents are always oh you just choose something and stick with it yes and no right you you have to know when to evolve when to change when to pick up new skills and most importantly you have to have yourself as a reference point that's that's the number one thing that most people kind of struggle with because you know grandpa said this mom said that my brother's doing this my uh, aunt is saying I should do that you have to find a way to listen to yourself sometimes you don't know you don't know everything about your career you don't know what's gonna happen next year or five years that's fine when you have a reference point as to who you are what you're meant to do even if something doesn't go the right way maybe a job goes south or a company implodes that's okay you have your reference point you did this work this will go as a reference point for each of you throughout your lives so first of all, we, we start with what I call founding stories. Okay, all of this is detailed in, in the worksheet in there. So founding stories are essentially formative experiences, right? When we grow up, we have mentors, we have rabbis, we have family, um, you know, a certain rav, whatever, whatever it is, right? Everybody has a different set of influences that uh, says, okay, here's how you should live, here's how you should work, here's what you should do. Um, what about the books that you really enjoy? What about uh, certain games that you like to play, right? Some people like to play maybe on Shabbat. They, uh, maybe they play language games or they play uh, word games or strategy or something else, right? Everybody has their own particular something that they enjoy and other things they don't enjoy as much. Um, you know, how do you make decisions? Do you make decisions by drilling down into a lot of information and then making a recommendation? Or are you someone that just sort of you know, looks for the answer in whatever comes. There's no right or wrong answer, right? Every person has their own set of, set of traits, okay? So we want to look at experiences. So let's say you, I don't know, maybe you went to Ukraine one summer and uh, something crazy happened. Maybe you ended up in Uman, I don't know. Everybody has crazy stories, right? What we want to look at, we want to look at how did you react when something didn't go right? And there's always something. How many stories can we tell? You know, the, the train didn't show up, the, you know, uh, I was given the wrong directions, right? How do you react and what do you take from that experience, right? There's no such thing that's too small or too trivial, okay? We want to take all of those little things. And, you know, having, having been in this community and, and, and coached certain people, there's this tendency that, oh, but that doesn't matter. That, that's not according to, you know, what I learned. That's okay. You, you're your own person. You have to take what Hashem has given you in your life and try to understand why, why me, what do I take from this, right? So nothing's too small, nothing's too trivial. I don't want to hear that from anybody, okay? Next, um, we go to the four pillars, okay? So I'm going to detail this in a minute. Life mission, values, outcomes, and role, okay? Those are four pillars of my methodology. Those are things, those are concepts that really help you to drill down into who you are just as a human, before we talk about, uh, you know, hashkafa uh, or, you know, the way, the way you understand this or that, it's, it's not an argument, right? This is something that is personal to you. Nobody can tell you you're like this or like that, okay? You have to figure it out for yourself, okay? So we'll work with that. Um, then we move to connecting that to a title in industry. So using life mission, values, outcomes, and role, which again, I'll detail in a minute, Using your founding stories, what you've been through, how you reacted, how do you make decisions, how do you process information, who are your mentors, favorite books, games, all those kinds of things. The whole person. We connect that to a title in the industry. So, okay, you're 
particularly good at, this is just an example, right? you're very good at talking to people and convincing them, persuading them to do something. So maybe you're good at business development. Okay? Maybe you grew up with some kind of health issue and you overcame it. So your thing is healthcare. So that's how we connect your particular story, right? Health issue, good with people to business development in healthcare. Again, just one example, but that's, that's how this is done. When you put in the hard work with the four pillars and uh, founding stories and also negative scripts, that's something else we'll talk about. You'll have this relatively clear idea, right? So even if you change industries, you still recall, you know what? I'm very good with people. I really should go and tell stories and create hope and you know, create something that doesn't exist in our mind because that's, that's my thing. So even if you change jobs, change careers, whatever, you'll always have that. I'm good at this. That's not going to change. Then you do company research. Okay? So you're clear on what you want to do. I want to do business development in healthcare. All right. Then you should go and look at companies that are solving the same problem that you're interested in, your life mission. Okay? You, there are ways to research these companies, to talk to them, to understand you know, how this aligns with who you are. Again, the key is always, who am I? What, what is important to me? Does this fit with my reference point? Not, oh, you know, how can I get in there? Because that doesn't really take you where you need to go. Okay? In the beginning, you, you need to, yes, you need experience, but you, you have to always start with yourself. Does this fit my roadmap? Does this fit my trajectory? Does this help me learn the skills that I need to get to where I'm going? Okay? If you don't use that process, you get lost. Right? So you take you know, something that doesn't get you where you need to go and you wash out of there. So we want to prevent that by having that reference point. Who am I? Where am I going? Does this fit with who I am? Okay, let's remember that, that's very important. Then we start writing what are called pain letters. You guys are familiar with cover letters, probably you might have heard what that's all about. It's a glorified way of saying, hi, I'm, I'm nice and bright and I have beautiful eyes, please hire me. What? <laughs> right, you don't want to be like every other schmuck lining up outside the door. Right? You want to have, you want to show that you're actually bright, that you actually did your research, you know all about the company, their mission and values, and you know where they need help. You know their business need. Okay? We always want to reference this whole process against business need for this particular CEO or this particular team. That's what matters. It's not about, oh, hi, you know, look, look at me, hi, hi. No, that's not what matters. When you know the business need, you can go and address it and you say, okay, I know you need more clients, you need more revenue. I'm really good at persuading people to do business, right? So give me a chance. Oh, okay. You, you know, you just, you see eye to eye with that person. They'll want to work with you. Then you create calls and meetings and interviews, right? You want to have a conversation. There's, there's no way to, to get a job without that conversation. But you don't just go in there and say, hey, you know, I, I get it. I'm, you know, hire me. No, no cover letter approach. Waste of time, right? You go in with that mindset. I know who I am. I know that what you're doing aligns with my mission. Your values align with my values. And I know where your business need is. I know exactly where that pain is, pain letter. Right? So I can come and help you to fill that gap. Oh, wow, awesome. Okay, so that's, that's how you get a chance with somebody. And uh, then, um, you know, of course, you want to prepare for that interview. You want to do all kinds of research on the company, the market, the brand, whose work there. You, you talk to as many people as you can, do online research, whatever you have to. Very, very important. The more work you put in up front, the less work you have to do later. Okay? And of course, you have to negotiate your offer. Right? This, even, even if it seems like, well, I'm just getting a, a foot in the door, who am I? Drop that. Right? You have a certain set of things that, again, I need to get out of this opportunity. Okay? It sounds selfish, sounds terrible, but you have to look at it that way because otherwise Somebody's just going to lead you around by the nose and you're like, how, how did I end up here? This is, this is not fitting with who I am, right? You have to negotiate and say, okay, this is, this is what I need. Maybe you can pay me as much as I'd like, but you know what? Maybe you need some learning opportunity. Maybe send me to a conference or you know what? Uh, help me do an online course. Maybe you can pay for that, okay? Why not? Try it. Worst thing is you get a no and you can negotiate for something else. Right? I mean, that's the whole idea. That's, that's what we do really well as a people. We negotiate. That's our reputation. So we've got to live up to it. Okay? 
All right, moving on. So you kind of get a sense of the roadmap, right? This is how you go from, uh, I'm not sure who I am, what I'm meant to do, to, okay, here's, here's where I'm gonna start. I know that this fits with who I am and where I'm going. All right, so again, we're talking about life mission, values, outcomes, and role. Those are four pillars. Then also negative scripts and founding stories. Let's, let's dig a little bit deeper into what each of those means. Life mission, okay, so this is about what problem excites you intellectually. Right, we're not talking about you know, reading Rashi or Rambam, although there are always, always insights there, right? But let's say you have any problem that you can solve in the world, right? You can try to, I don't know, cure cancer. You can try to deliver drinking water to people that don't have it. You can invent something that you know, can be patented, right? Something that's very specific according to that maybe health problem that you suffered as a kid and you really want to work on it. You're very driven to do that. Whatever, again. Nothing is too small, nothing is too trivial, as long as it's not kind of like, well, you know, I'm going to tinker with this widget and sell it on Amazon. Again, nothing wrong with that, but look further down, right? Maybe 10 years, 15 years. What do you want to be doing? You can do anything you want. You can go learn anything you want, get any experience that you need. But you have to have that trajectory and not say, oh, well, who am I? What am I? I don't have experience. I don't have schooling. It doesn't matter. Right? If you really want something, you'll find a way to get it. But that's a second question. The first is, what, what are you looking for? What is your thing? So that's, that's life mission. It's a specific problem that's not too small and it's not too big. Kind of like, you know, I want to cure everybody of their health problem. A little bit too big. Okay? So you, you want to you wanna have it focused enough and not too small. So it's not like, you know, what am I doing next month? This is like 10 years, a little bit further down the road. And then, you know, think about the things that excite you when you wake up in the morning. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. This is very specific to each of you. All right, so when I wake up in the morning, I think, okay, yeah, wife and, you know, uh, my wife needs me to do this. My kids uh, need my help. Okay, maybe that's, that's not quite it, right? But if, if you have, yes, <laughs> if you have a, a choice of, let's say, helping people in this world in some particular way, how do you do that? How do you guide them through a process through which you've been yourself? Right? That's, that's kind of how to look at this. What process have I been through to get to the other side that I can teach someone else? And it doesn't mean you have to go be a teacher or a professor. It just means that in your work, you're guiding people through that process. Right? Maybe you're selling software, and the software helps them to cut the time and the money they spend on whatever task. That's great. There's, you know, that's excellent. Most people want to pay for something that saves them time and money. So let's, let's we'll, do this, we'll do this in the worksheet. First, I want to run through the categories. But start thinking about those things. What is my life mission? What problem do I want to solve? Values. OK, what are values? Right? We're, not, we're not talking about some kind of uh, vague uh, you know, Bible Belt values or something like that. right? And we're not talking about you know, what the Rebbe said or any of that. That, that goes without saying. We're, we're here. We're all on board. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about when you choose to spend your time with people, right? You choose to spend time with them. It's not your, uh, you know, sister, brother, mother, uh, roommate, whatever. It's, you know, friends that you choose to spend time with. Maybe you travel out of your way to, to meet a Rav who's a mentor, whatever, right? A anyone can be a mentor anywhere, okay? So... When you look at those people in your life that you choose to spend time with, you choose to read their books, you, you choose to learn from them in some way, what is common to them? What are their midot? Right? Are they kind? Are they generous? Are they hilarious? Brilliant? Empowering? Are they, uh, you know, shamai, hilal? Right? You have to think about those concrete things. What is common to those people? Because usually it's something that's in you as well. That's why you gravitate toward them. These things become very important because even if you have a dream job, if you're doing exactly what you're meant to do, but you're doing it with the wrong people, you're not going to last there, right? I mean, if, if the, these people are, you know, maybe they're thieves, maybe they're treating you badly, whatever, right? Even if, with a dream job, you're not going to last there because it's, it's against who you are. So this is very important to, to write down to just understand for yourself. This is what I need from 
my coworkers, from the people that I spend so much time with. Okay. Outcomes. What are, what in the world are outcomes? Okay. We're not you know when you think about doing a job, it's about uh, generating a report. Maybe it's about uh, making a spreadsheet. Maybe the deliverables. Right. We talk a lot about this deliverables. That's not what this is. Okay. As I mentioned, each of us has a mission in this world. Right. I'm meant to do this. Okay? And it, it takes time. It takes time to, to figure that out exactly. But through this exercise, we'll get closer. So in the course of helping other people through your particular vessel, through your skills, experiences, etc., what do you like to deliver to other people to help improve their lives? Right? Is it that you like to uh, deliver some particular niche knowledge? Let's say you you know the, the inside and out of this particular sefer, and, and that's, that's just your thing. Anybody comes to argue with you, you set them straight. You know? Maybe you're someone who has this big vision that you know, I, I want to you know, build, um, build this amazing you know, synagogue uh, in Jerusalem. Okay, again, nothing, nothing right or wrong, it's just subjective. Okay? So, you go and you say, okay, you know, I'm raising money, please come uh, give me money or come work with me or help me with this, right? I mean, you're the kind of evangelist, for lack of a better term, okay? Maybe you're someone who's really no-nonsense and you say, you know what, I, I, don't, I don't care about this or this. It's, there's a timeline, there's a budget, let's get this done. No looking left, no looking right. Some people are like that. Others take care of the people that they work with, right? They say, okay, I'm going to support you, I'll give you... Uh, money, I'll give you psychological support, whatever you need to do your best work, okay? Caretakers. So you have certain particular types that most people fall into. And you want to think about really one at most two that most closely fit to who you are. And you want to, you don't want to just think about work, you know, really, when I was there, no, just in your life. In any situation, right, every person has a tendency that, you know, again, something doesn't Excuse me, something doesn't go right. Again, the train doesn't arrive on time or you, know, you get the wrong uh, directions or I don't know, you get attacked, right? How do you react? What's, what's your way to make things better? Right? Think about those outcomes we just talked about. Okay? And role grows out of that. So just imagine that you're doing volunteer work. Maybe you're uh, going to Kathmandu to run a Seder, for example. Okay? And um, again, Maybe you're volunteering, maybe it's something else, maybe you're getting paid for it, doesn't matter. But you probably will tend to have a way to help people in a certain way. Maybe you organize the event, maybe you invite the people, maybe you raise the funds, maybe um, you, know, you find some particular insight uh, from the Haggadah that nobody knows, right? Everyone has that kind of thing that they tend to do generally. So that's, the, that's what we call role. And then, of course, what do we call this? Right, it's very important because you want to translate to that to the workplace. And that's, that's what we're all about here. Right? We want a practical takeaway. We talked a bit about this, but um, it kind of bears repeating. So everyone has people that they look up to, that they grew up with, that really pointed the way. Again, it might be a Rav, it might be an uncle. Uh, you know, all kinds of different people. Maybe you read something online uh, that really moved you, or it was a book. It doesn't matter. Everybody has different sources for something that touches them because of who they are. Okay. Um, books, um, encounters, maybe you, you met someone when you were young that really just blew you away with, with their insight or how, how kind they were to you. Um, you know, you might have gone on some kind of crazy adventures. You know, obviously being part of Chabad that tends to tends to make you go toward crazy adventures. I'm, I'm part of that group very much. <laughs> what kinds of games do you enjoy playing? Again, maybe it's uh, just some time off and you're, you're playing Scrabble or you're playing uh, some kind of crazy strategy game trying to win World War II. I don't know. Or you know, maybe you like role playing. Maybe on Purim you're, you're the guy with the craziest costume. I don't know, right? But that's, that's great. Just focus on it, grab it, and, and call it something because that's, that's where the answer is. And uh, how do you make decisions? Right? It's, it's not, a small, not a small question. How do you make decisions? Is it that you consult a thousand sources and you look for the, for the answer? Or do you 
talk to others who've been through that process and are on the other side? Are you someone who always says, okay, I have to talk to my Rav? Or are you someone that, you know, um, just does a survey? I don't know, call a friend. Right? Everybody has their own style. But you want to you wanna call it, you want to capture it, because that's, that's going to have insights as to who you are, where you're meant to go. And negative scripts. So this is, this is a very difficult subject, I would say, for everyone, <laughs> myself included, right? Because we, we grow up in, in a community that's, you know, in a way very strict, right? It forces you to act a certain way and to see things in a certain way, with some variation, of course. But as a result, it's, it's often not easy to sort of spread your wings and say, you know what, this is my particular way of influencing people positively. Yeah, of course, you have to go out and, you know, shlichut or help people put on tefillin, whatever it is, right? It's not just about the kind of compulsive mitzvot that everybody's doing, so I have to go do it, right? It's, it's your particular thing. Everybody usually has that one or two mitzvot that they gravitate towards, right? And again, the, all those little things have sparks of truth, and we want to put those together and say, okay, this is what it looks like at work. Okay, so... Again, growing up, all of us go through this. We maybe compare ourselves to our siblings or our neighbor or roommate or whatever, right? All of that is kind of in the back of, in the, back of the mind. Where, where should I be at this stage in my life, right? Do I need to be married? Do I need to have five kids? We want, we want to put that down on paper. We want to write it down because that already makes it easier when, when you know what to call it. It's a negative script. It's, it's a voice. It doesn't mean that it's the only voice. It doesn't mean it's the truth. It's there. It's probably going to be there until you start ignoring it and just saying, okay, that's there. That's fine. But I am who I am with all my feathers and flaws and mistakes and whatever. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Right? I'm meant to be here. I'm meant to understand who I am and go on my mission. That's it. Right? So there's, there's no such thing as like I have to... I have to hide it and I have to pretend to be someone else. This is personal for each of you, right? So with this exercise, ideally you should do it, you know, in a different part of town, far away from anybody who might, hey, you know, get away. <laughs> for this exercise, you have to get away mentally and really spread your wings. It's very, very important. Otherwise, you just fall back into that trap of, you know, I'm the, I'm the little brother or I'm the, you know, the, the big sister, whatever. You know, everybody has their kind of, thing that they always do and everyone relies on them for that you're the guy or oh you're the the little silly one or whatever right think about those things because they affect how you see yourself and your ability to become your fullest best self okay then um i mean i don't know i guess for millennials there's this idea of fear of missing out right so those guys are starting a business oh i have to jump in right oh you know someone started a, an amazon business oh right you have to be aware of that again the whole idea here is you are your own reference point. Again, with all the flaws, feathers, mistakes, that's fine. That's okay. But everyone has, every single person has their mission. They have to use that as a reference. Otherwise, they get distracted. Right? Shiny object syndrome, it's called. Okay? All right. So now I would like to take a few minutes for each of you to just start jotting down some thoughts. This is not meant to be exhaustive, but five minutes. I'm going to time you. Just take five minutes and start writing down. 